do African gray parrots make good family birds or pets? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Blues Bond. Please be sure to get your copy on Amazon.com so that you have your handbook and you know everything that you need to provide so that your parrot has a quality life and you can then have quantities of bliss. This is Adonis, my African gray parrot. We have four African gray parrots. We adopted all of them as adults and three of them are pluckers. The thing that you should really know about African gray parrots if you're thinking about getting one as a family pet is that these highly intelligent birds, they are often thought of as the most intelligent out of all the 350 to 400 species of parrots, depending on how they're categorized, um, most intelligent and most able to mimic talk in basically someone's voice. So really good talkers. Those are some great advantages. You maybe have also heard that they aren't very loud. In other words, they'll talk and they can make sounds. And if you live next to a construction zone, your African gray might start making jackhammer sounds and be kind of loud. But otherwise, you've probably heard that they aren't the squawkers, the screamers that, for example, an Amazon parrot or a cockatoo parrot would be. So you might be thinking that this would be one cool, wonderful family pet, but that's not entirely true. One challenge with African gray parrots is that they tend to be one person birds. A one person bird is a bird that picks one person in the family and is friends with them. That's their mate, as in their best friend or they think it's a mate, like a regular partner. Outside of that mate, they don't really behave in any friendly way to others. So one thing you need to know is that if you get an African Grey, it's possible that your African Grey won't like your mate and won't be nice to your mate, won't tolerate your mate and might even lunge at and try to hurt other people in your home. Not fun, right? Kind of hard. Another thing that you really need to know, especially if you have kids at home, is that African gray parrots bite. They can bite. Now, any parrot can bite, and they all have this hook bill. Do you see her black hook of a bill? It's really strong. She can open just about any nut, not some of the big nuts like a walnut, and certainly not a coconut the way my macaw parrots can, but it's a pretty strong beak. And sometimes when African gray parrots bite down, their jaws seem to lock in and hold. It's like this claw clamp bite. I haven't experienced that with any of my other 17 species of parrots. These guys are special that way from my experience. It can be painful and it can be hard because you're kind of going, hey, let go get off let go and that can make it very challenging they can leave a bite that leaves at least a scar and is painful i think at their worst they could probably really cut you up and i don't know maybe take a little pinky off i wouldn't put it past them so these are things that you need to really be aware of i would not therefore recommend them for children are there some exceptional children that might bond and have an incredible experience? Absolutely. But I don't know how you'd know whether or not you're going to have that exceptional setup. In other words, generally speaking, African greys, they kind of are very aloof. That's one of the words I used to describe them. They like things chill. They don't freak out real easy the way some parrots can. With a lot of my parrots, if another bird <laughs> flies out back, did you see the way she just jumped? My other birds will fly around the house like, danger, Will Rogers, danger. So African greys are more mellow and they like things more mellow. If you have a dog that's barking at their cage, you're gonna stress out your African grey. In other words, if your African grey doesn't like other people in the family, that could be a problem. If your African grey feels provoked to bite and learns to bite, that can be a problem. If your African Grey is in their cage a lot or has a dog barking at them, these guys are one of the species, unfortunately, that easily get stressed. So 
as a family pet, a dog sits around, everyone can hug it, it protects everyone. It's very easy to have. In a way, an African Grey can be very difficult to have because it's possible that only one family member will be able to hold it. It's possible that it'll bite and people won't want to hold it. It's possible that as it's sitting in its cage, if you have a dog or a cat that are walking around the cage stalking their prey because they are predators and this is a bird, it's going to stress them out and then you're going to feel bad when he or she pulls out all of their feathers, you're going to take them to the vet. It's a very difficult thing to handle. African gray parrots also, being so intelligent, they really require a lot of mental stimulation and I would say probably at least a friend. Our African greys each have a buddy in their cage and that means that they're not alone. They have their own mini flock. Do I think it's ideal? No. I think that a space this big, which is actually where my macaws usually are and therefore my African greys can't be, but a space this big with a small flock might be more suited to an African grey. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to have all the time to, like, if you're African grey, you know, what I'm trying to say is if they were out here, would you get to bond with them? Yes, but you would have to spend a lot of time with them. Of course, a cat and a dog, that's not necessarily true. You don't need to dedicate hours every day to your dog or cat, but you do to any parrot. The smaller the parrot, I find the less you have to spend hours upon hours. And it's not like I have to spend four hours with each one of these African greys every day. But I am home. I do work from home. They see me. I'm with all of my birds. I'm a part of their flock. That's sort of what it has to be like. And if you are a family that has one or two people working, that has kids, you're taking the kids to school, maybe you're taking them to soccer or something like that, this may not be the ideal pet because your pet may not be getting the time and attention that they would get in a flock. In a flock, it's 24 seven. Those are really high stakes. And so even if your parrot doesn't quite expect to spend all night with you, they do expect some, some very genuine and consistent companionship because that's the way they are made. They are flock animals and they do spend all of their lives together. So those are some things to be really aware of. If you're in a situation where you and your partner can really spend a lot of time with your African Grey, it is likely that in that scenario, you're both gonna be able to handle your African Grey, although your Grey will still prefer one of you over the other and be nicer to the one. But the Grey will probably at least tolerate the other if you both spend a lot of time with them. If you have children, you still might have a great experience with an African Grey. I'm not saying you won't. I'm saying that these are things to really think about and consider before buying a four to five thousand dollar bird, depending on where you get your African Grey from. And I'm sure that there are some that sell for less and some that sell for more, but that gives you an idea of what kind of financial investment this bird costs. In addition to that, these birds need a fair size cage that takes a fair size of space up in your home and are usually somewhere in the neighborhood of 300, 400, 500, and can go up to 1,000 and more, depending on the kind of cage and the size you get. As far as their diet goes, these birds need fresh vegetables every day. In some ways, that might be easy if you're making vegetables for yourselves anyway. Um, but they need fresh vegetables every day, pellets, to help them stay healthy and get a really well-balanced diet, and nuts. Now, nuts can get expensive. I would say that this is one of the most expensive parts of maintaining an African Grey in addition to going to the vet. Of course, you're not going to go to the vet every month, but every month you do need a bit of a budget for your nuts. African Grey parrots like different kinds of nuts, walnuts, pistachios. What else do you like, sweetie? Hi, huh, Donnie. Are you having fun? <laughs> She's a little nervous. It's a little windy. She's not with her buddy, but she also like really wants to be with me. Hi, sweetie. Right? And that's why she's talking. Hi, Donnie. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want to factor those things in because there are some costs. And maintaining a clean space for them may not cost you money, but it does cost you some time and energy. These guys do poop pretty darn good, and so their cage, in addition to the bottom needing to be cleaned out and replaced the paper or whatever you have at the bottom, uh, they tend to poop around their cage too. 
And so these are some things to keep in mind just so that if you get an African gray parrot as a family pet, you know that everyone needs to try to handle them. Everyone needs to try to work through some of the time and training or, or just um, bonding that it'll take for everyone to be able to at least feel comfortable around the parrot, for the parrot to be happy and healthy, not get stressed out, and really have those nuts, have that healthy space, because those things are a part of what is required for an African gray parrot to maintain their own well-being. And again, I would say a second one as well. So now we're talking about at least an eight to $10,000 family pet. So, <laughs> you know, and I do find that most people don't get one dog, they get two dogs or two cats so that they can keep each other company. The same is even more so true with parrots. So if you get an African gray parrot, I hope you have a wonderful experience. They're incredible birds. They really will bond with someone and hopefully with more than one person in your home. It's just you really want to know and try to work towards that so that everyone tries to bond so that hopefully you have a good experience. And when you do bond with them, they are so intelligent. They're creatures of habit. They'll wake you up maybe in the morning. I have a parrot that wakes me up every morning. They'll talk to you. They'll look at you like it's time to come out and do this or that. I mean, they get to know you and just become a real integral part of your life. And that is why people call parrots fids often. Feathered kids, that's what fids means. So thank you for joining me in this blissful video. If you're in the market and get hopefully two African greys, I hope you have a wonderful experience with them. They are phenomenal birds and a lot of fun. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to comment below. Um, please make sure you like. If you want to catch my videos, I try to post every day. Make sure that you set your preferences on Google because, um, or on YouTube, not just subscribing because you need to do both in order to be notified when there's a video again generally tomorrow. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.